Mm. Well, Arturo, looks like it's going to be only you and me today. <clears throat> Hi, good evening, teacher. <laughs> good evening. <laughs> How are you doing today? Um, uh, I was um, very busy. I know. But I'm here. Okay, so, that's good. Um, how do you uh, a little bit. How, how do you do that that background like like if you're at the beach or something how do you do that it's something that you can do like here oh. like on zoom or yeah. is that an app or it's like a background that you have or no. something no it's it's, it's zoom is and it's is it's in zoom when i I can um make so many change oh, uh, about uh, about the background mm -hmm. uh about the avatars. Oh, so it's like a background. Yep. Oh, I see. Okay, so good evening to the other ones. Looks like we are not going to have too many people today, or probably they are going to be connecting throughout the session. I hope so. Uh, <clears throat> Well, meanwhile, we're waiting for the others. I'm going to try to start uh, typing something in here, uh, some sentences before we start with uh, today's class. <clears throat> so when we see more people, we're going to start to discuss them all. Uh, well, uh, I see more people. We are six already. <clears throat> I have a little cough. It's like, uh, well, in El Salvador, like a lot of people have flu and cough nowadays. I don't know if it's like an infection or a virus or something like that. But most of us have been sick. <clears throat> well, I see that we are getting more people connected to the class. That's good. So uh, for the ones that are already here, just take a look at the three sentences that I have in here. Just take a look, try to analyze them for one minute. Meanwhile, we wait for the others, okay? Just analyze them, try to remember probably something that we saw yesterday. And uh, uh, today we're gonna have part two of relative clauses, okay? <clears throat> I don't know what's going on. I saw seven people. Now I see six. <clears throat> I haven't heard anything from the others, so I'm expecting them to be here in the class. So as I said, please take a look to, to that. Can you send me the link? Okay. What's the link? Someone is asking for the link. Do you guys know what's the link? Well, I really don't know. So, <clears throat> well, well, so I see uh, more people connecting already, seven of us. Well, so we're going to start because, you know, time is running and we already missed five minutes. So with that being said, guys, uh, 
we go with the first one. And what do you guys remember regarding to yesterday's class? Yesterday, uh, we saw something related to relative clauses. Do you guys remember that, relative clauses? Yesterday, we saw the first one, which is the defining relative clause. What does it mean? It is extra information that we have regarding to place, a thing, person, okay? Now, uh, let me ask you a question. Can I take out some, like the relative clause, can I take it out? And if I take it out, will that still make sense? No. And in defining relative clause, mm -hmm. um, the sentences lose the sense. But they if, lose the sense. If we take out the... Um, the relative clause. The relative clause, yeah. That's right. That's what we're talking about. Now, uh, let me just try to get here. What's that? Okay. <clears throat> I think that we have... Okay, this is what I want. Alrighty. So, uh, we have in here, Jesus, this thing is not helping me today. Well, okay. So, here we have this. Uh, we have this example with, with what does it, it says, that is the woman who stole my coat. Now, uh, what will be or how can we identify the defining relative clause? First of all, can someone tell me something very easy that will help you to identify a defining relative clause? Any idea? Uh, yes, um, we can find uh, with only watching the relative clause. Oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry, guys. See, it's something with the internet connection. It's like probably because it's a little bit cloudy here. It looks like it's going to rain. Like, uh, you know, it's not working properly. And, uh, well, let me just go ahead and try to share once again my screen. And I will have, I will have once again, I guess, to write what I had. So let me just write it. That is the woman who stole my coat. Now, we have this one here. And how do you guys think that we can be, or how would you identify the relative clause in this one? How do you think we can do that? Um. We can find them um, uh, after the relative known. The relative. In this, case, in this case, it's who. It's who. Okay, let's see. We got who in here. So that's that's what it said. The relative pronoun, let's say. RP. So it's, it's not working there. What's going on? Oh, that's the banishing one. Okay, never mind. Yeah. So this one, it's who? Oh. Okay, let's see. That's really weird. It's not letting me. It's not letting me do something. It's vanishing. Well, what this one says. All right, so we're going to try to work with this. So first of all, the relative pronoun, it's going to be who, right? Who? And... So we already know or we already identified the relative pronoun. Now, can we create any question to identify the whole relative or defining relative clause? Is there any question that can help you guys to identify? Could you guys create a question from there? Oh, that's good. Thank you. Uh, I don't know who did that, but thank you. All right. So, can we make a question? 
Yes, we can. How? First of all, if we have, can we identify the subject in here? What's the subject? The woman. The woman. <laughs> now, according to that, if I want to create a question to identify the defining relative clause, which relative pronoun can I use? I already told you, right? Which one do you think I can use? Who? Who? Uh, Who? Uh, oh, no. Which? Oh, in, in this case, um, if we are talking about the stole, the stole, the, the, the quote, We can we we can use which for make a question. Which okay? Which what? Which which article was rabbit? Which article was robbed? Do the other ones agree to what he's saying? Any other option that we can have? Hello to the others, Hello. are you there? Um, Hello. We can mention it. Uh, we can use the relative known who again. Again, um, like who? 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 Who is tall? Who's tall? Okay. Any other idea? The others? Well, I guess you're here. We or still have Janina, we have Rosemary, Javier, Nadia, we have Maritza, we have Ana Filomena, Cesar, and Sonia. But I can only listen to Arturo. So where are the others? Hello. I don't know if they cannot. They cannot hear me. Can you hear me, Arturo? You're you're yeah, listening. Yeah, to yeah, me. yeah, yeah. I I can hear. So that's weird. Then so I really don't know if they are here or not. But anyway, okay. Now, good try. Good try, let me tell you, good try. But if we have this, which article was robbed? If we have that question, will that question give us an answer? Yes, and that will be which article was robbed? What's the answer to that question? The My stole. Uh, the stole, uh, the cut. The coat, okay, the coat, okay. That question means that we are not we are not identifying the defining relative clause. It's not giving us anything. It's telling my code. That's the answer. Is my code the defining relative clause? Uh, it is not, not right? It is not. So we can we can say that this question here is not the one. Now if we say who stole, does that give us an answer? Who stole? Hmm. The woman. the woman, she's the one that saw. Now, is the woman a defining relative clause? No. Not right. So with these two questions, we can say that neither one of them is the right question for us to identify a defining relative clause. Now, any other idea? Hmm. What is uh, what's happening with this woman? Okay, let's try to find out. I I think about um which code. Okay, let's write that down. Which code? Oh. 
Okay, now let's try to find something. What is happening with this woman? Do we get an answer for, to that question? What's happening with this woman? Hmm. We get nothing from that one. Why? Because we don't know what's happening. Mm -hmm. Now, which code? If we say which code, that's going to yeah. be my yeah, code. My yes. code. So are we getting a defining relative clause answer? Mm, no. Not completely. Um... You are close. Uh, Maritza, she was really close, actually. Uh, which code? Which code? Who stole? Who stole? Okay. He said which code, but Maritza already said which code. And we found out that if we say which code, which one? My code. So we are not getting a defining relative clause. Which, which woman? Now, let's see. Here we have which woman? Now, which woman? Mm, but in, in this case, teacher, um, mm -hmm. we have to use who, who woman, or, or we can use the relative nouns which. Okay, when do we use which? When we saw the WH questions when you were, you know, in basic English, you might remember that we use which when we have several options. We have more than one option, right? I have, I can have option A, option B, and option C. Now, if I say which woman, it's because around the store or where this situation is going on, there's more than one. But in this case, we're talking about that woman. Which one? We really don't know. There's more than one. But that is the woman, that one that we see there. We don't know. I mean, we might know, but there's more women. Women, you know what I mean? So that's why we use which. I completely understand what, you, what your question is. Now, let's find out. If we say which woman, do we get any answer? Qual mujer? La mujer que robó mi abrigo. Mi abrigo, exactly. So we know, automatically, we know that this is the question that helped us. To identify what? The defining. The relative defining clause. relative clause. And the defining relative clause is going to be this and this automatically. You see? It disappears. It says here, I know, vanishing yeah. pen or something. But I just wanted to, you know, to give you like a little introduction before we go to the next one. And the next one, let me <clears throat> go ahead and share. And for today, as I said yesterday, we are going to see the second one or, or the secondary type of relative clause, which is a non-defining relative clause. What is that? As the name it says, a non-defining relative clause is what? Uh, let's see. Let me have someone. Just let me. It's shocking. Can you see the screen? Oh, bless you. I don't know who's. <clears throat> well, okay. Alrighty. So let me see. Noemi. No. You know what? Andrea Michelle. Please go ahead and help me reading what a non-defining relative clause is. Andrea Michelle. Hello. Me, teacher, I can help you. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. A non-defining relative clause. A non-defining. 
and uh, an undefining relative clause. Okay, remember, we don't say clause, we say clause. Clause. You give us extra information about some or something is isn't essential for understanding who or what we are talking about. Thank you. What's your name? Nadia. Nadia, thank you very much, Nadia. All right. The difference between a defining and non-defining, it's pretty obvious. Why? On the defining relative clause, the extra information that we have, it's always necessary. But this one, a non-defining relative clause, the information that we have is not really necessary. It's just extra information that we are giving about someone or something we are talking about. And something very important that is going to help you to identify them is that most of the time they will be divided by commas. So automatically you will understand, okay, I see two commas. What does it mean? That's a non-defining relative clause. Why? It means that if I take that extra information, if I take it out, the sentence will still make sense by itself. Now, let's try to find that out. Let's see, um, Rosemary, help me reading that one. And then, Nadia, you can help me with the second one. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. My grandfather, who's 87, who's goes swimming every day. Okay, goes. Now we see my grandfather, who's 87, goes swimming every day. What is a non-essential clause or a non-defining clause doing in here? It's just giving me extra information, telling me that my grandfather, he is 87. Do I need to know this information? Probably, if I want to give more information regarding to the subject. Do I need it? Not really. Can I take it out? Yes, I can. How so? I can say, my grandfather goes swimming every day. Will that still make sense to you guys? Will that still Thank make sense? Yes? I have a question Go ahead. that I don't say in English. Um, is this example is similar in Spanish when you we using commas? Mm -hmm. uh, the sentence, esto no lo puedo decir, no pierde el sentido. Mm -hmm. si se in the second part is similar. It's exactly like that. Similar like that. Why? Because if we take out, si quitamos es, like what we have between the two commas, if we take that out, the sentence will still make sense. So if I say, my grandfather goes swimming every day, what do you understand? Like in Spanish, what do you guys understand? Um, mi abuelo... Um... Va a nadar todos los días. Mi abuelo va a nadar todos los días. Does it make sense? Yeah. It makes sense. It's a complete sentence. Es una oración completa. Now, if I say, who's 87, is that necessary? It's mm -hmm. not. Yeah, We are really? just giving extra information regarding to, to who. Extra information regarding to who? Hello? Uh, to your grandfather. grandfather. My, your grandfather. Grandfather. my grandfather. Exactly. So we're giving extra information regarding to my grandfather. This one, a non-defining, is very easy to identify. 
So when you see two commas, automatically you will understand that that's a non-defining. Now, let's see, uh, Maritza, can you please help me with number two, Maritza? Okay. The house which was built in 1983. 18. 18, exactly. Open to the public. To the public. Okay. So the house, which was built in 1883, has been opened to the public. Do I really need this, this information or the non-defining relative clause? Not really. This, most of the time in grammar, guys, this one is only used for you to give more information to someone who is reading or someone you're speaking to. When it comes to speaking, it's very difficult sometimes to identify whether it is defining or non-defining. Why? Because when you're speaking, we cannot see the commas, can we? Not right. That we cannot see the commas while you're speaking. That's impossible. But when it comes to writing, you can obviously identify it by what? By the two commas. That's it. Now, Francisco Alberto, the last one, please. Okay, teacher. Um, good evening. Good evening. <laughs> uh, the word was giving to Sarah. To Sarah, okay. Okay. Cool short story in Brazil. The, impressed. Impressed, sorry. Impressed. The, uh, no sé cómo se pronuncia. Uh, judges. Judges. ¿Cómo? The judges. The judges. 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 No, judges. Ja <laughs> sorry. Judges. Judges. Okay, exactly. Sorry? Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> okay. Now, we okay. say, if we say the R word was given to Sarah, that's okay. It was given to Sarah. We already know that, and we we could say that without or necessarily giving extra information. But we want to say that it was given to Sarah, whose short story impressed the judges. You see, we're just extra information. That's it. And something that I was saying, we also use comma to separate the clauses from the rest of the sentences. Now, is it clear so far? I think that this one is pretty easy. It's easier than the one that we saw yesterday. Yesterday's one was a little complicated for us to understand. But now, do we understand this one? Um, yes. 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 Well, okay, so I hope so. Now we're going to move on to the next part. And this one, let's see, yeah, this is the one. Okay, yeah. All right, so now we're going to identify the importance of the comas. Why are they important? Now let's try to find that out. And let me let me hear you, um, Javier. What do you mean, George? The importance of a comma. Can you tell the difference in meaning? My brother, who is a doctor, lives in Africa. My brother, who is a doctor, lives in Africa. Okay, thank you very much. Can you see that? And both of them are the same sentence? What is the difference that can, that you can see there? Obviously, the first difference is what? The comas, right? Now, do they make a difference? Can you tell me if, if you see these two examples, which are pretty similar, would you be able to identify whether it is a non-essential or non-defining or would you be able to identify a defining or relative clause? Which is which? Can you identify it? If we go to the first one, my brother, who is a doctor, lives in Africa. Can you identify what type of relative clause is this one? Hmm. The first one is known relatives. Non-relatives. Yeah. 
Non-defining. Non Non-defining, okay. Non <laughs> but why? Why do you say that? It is because we use the comma in the noun. And we um, use a comma for to explain another information that it is not relative. But here, but here we have another comma as well. Yes, but in in another, I think that is a good information. Okay, Nadia, what do you think? Thank you, Philomena. And the first sentence, then my brother, who is a doctor, lives in Africa, eh, eh, have uh, extra information. But in the second sentence, my brother is an affirmative and complement uh, information in the sentence. Okay, thank you very much, Nadia. That was really good. Now, let's find that out. Let's see. Okay, you see here? We have the answer. The first one is a non-defining. Why? You probably have only one brother. So if we take this away, the sentence will still make sense. And we can say, my brother lives in Africa. Okay, now it will say, my brother who is a doctor lives in Africa. Now, defining why? You have more than one brother and you want to talk about this one. So this information, we cannot take it away. Why? Because if we take it away, so then we, we won't have now a relative clause. You see, this information here is important. Why? Because we have more than one brother and we're talking about this one. Which one? The one who is a doctor. You see, do we understand the difference or the importance of using a comma and the difference that we can have between one and another? Yes, teacher. Well, I hope so. Well, uh, I really don't know, guys, what happened with the other ones today. That's really weird. And uh, today I feel you a little down today. I don't know why. Probably it's my... Um, you know, my expectation or something that I is you're usually more Teacher. active. Yeah. I'm sorry, I have a question. Uh, mm -hmm. What is uh, translating in Spanish the means? The means? Meaning. Well, what do you mean? Do you uh, mean translating them? For example, uh, the dice, can you tell on different in means? In or, meaning? Uh, what is the la diferencia en significado? Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, teacher, yeah, okay. sorry. No, that's okay. That's okay. Now, we can see here, be careful. Why do we have to be careful? The relative pronoun, as it says here, subject or object of the relative clause, we do not repeat it. Why? We have here, Mary Curie is the woman who she discovered the radium. Why don't we repeat it? Because if we say, if we're saying who in here, are we talking about the same Mary Curie? Yes, right? So we're still talking about Mary Curie. So it's not necessary to, to repeat once again or to say she. It's not necessary. You see? This is what, the only thing that we have to pay attention to and be careful. This is the house that Jack built it. What are you trying to say? What is this it? What do you think that this it is trying to? House. Just the house, exactly. Mm -hmm. Why it's the house. Excellent. So in this case, it's not necessary for us to say it because automatically that, which is what? A relative pronoun. It's already replacing the house. Bless you. I don't know. Some someone has flu or a little cold. Now, do we understand that, guys? Is it understandable now? Do you think that if we make a little practice that will be easier for you to understand? It will be easier for you to identify whether it is 
a defining or non-defining relative clause? Do we still need to go or do you want me to explain you something else that is not clear? Um, or did you understand? Um, I guess teacher, uh, so extra point would be um, we, we, we can't use that in, in the case of the non-relative clause. Oh, uh, do you mean this one? Yes, in in non relatives. Non relatives. In, in what non defining? Do you, non def we, What do you mean? Um, we we can't use that in in a non defining relative clause. Why do you think so? Um. The com when the commas use. Mm -hmm. Now let's try. Let's try to 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 have an example. Let me write an example. Uh, Sir. Yes, go ahead. Sorry, teacher. That's my point because mm -hmm. uh, when when I was um when I was uh finishing the platform, mm -hmm. I was a lot of room in in the platform because mm -hmm. I I understood that the only we use uh in non defining clauses mm -hmm. we only use a comma comma right a comma so, yeah comma comma two comma a non defining mm -hmm. in non and non defining but in the in the exercise mm -hmm. in the platform we <laughs> in some in, in some exercise we only use one comma for the non-defining for um uh, it is because in the exercise said that we need to identify defining and don in non-defining clauses mm -hmm. so um I think that my problem my problem was uh to identify when we are to write two commas and when we are to write one comma. Okay, yeah. Yes. That's it, it, that that that's very very difficult to me because uh in the information in the plasma say only two commas. And don't say when we are to use only one comma and when we are to use only two comma. So uh, when I told to the English corporative, English corporative gave, gave me a, a some help. Mm -hmm. uh, they gave me only one comma, so it was my surprise. Mm, okay, I understand. Yeah, uh, that's why, that's why, that's what I was telling you. It is important to ask the questions. Do you remember the questions that we were having before? Like, for example, to identify, uh, like, like these questions here. Yes, so yes, these, yes, yes. these type of questions are going to help you to identify whether it is a defining or non-defining. So how do we understand when to use one comma and when not to use two? So sometimes we only have to pay attention to the context. For example, let's suppose that we have uh, that this part here is not in green, it's in black and we have no commas in here. So yes. we, we, as we can see here, we can have, for the same sentence, we can have two differences when it comes to one comma and two commas. You see, so sometimes I completely understand that, guys. Sometimes you might get a little confused and you might start wondering, so do I use one comma or how do I know when to use one comma and when to use two? That's probably what happened to some of you right but thank you so much for sharing that now that's why i'm asking you is it clear now 
do we still need to go back to some to some exercises, to some information to kind of refresh or remind you about that or is clear so far in case we have an exam, let's say, would you be able to identify them? Uh, teacher, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but uh, in this moment, I know that I will to try to write one comma or two comma. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't know. Oh, okay, okay, that's so good. In this moment, I am, I am, uh, I know that if if the platform did say no to comma, I going to try only one comma. Okay, yeah, that's we we have sometimes we just go by logic. We try yeah. either one way or, or the other, yeah. the one that works better for us. That's that's for sure. Now it is time for us guys to practice, and I need you to take a screenshot of these uh, exercises. These are the ones that we are going to be working in groups. I already gave you here. You know the I already identified them for you. So it's not difficult. What I want you to do in here is either for the defining ones, try to write a question. For the non-defining ones, just write whether it is defining or non-defining. It's pretty easy what we're going to do. Do you understand? What we're going to do here is only to classify them whether it is defining or non-defining. Only for the defining ones, I need you to make a little question that will help you to identify whether where it's located. Do you understand? Um, yes. yes sure. Nadia. I, I have a question. Can mm -hmm. you send the screen about the second sentence? The second sentence, what do you mean? Let, let me see. Probably what you mean. Let me let me share it again. Uh, let's see. So, do you mean do you mean this second, this same? one? No, and the no this the one. other. This one. No. Yes, yes, yes. And the second one in the village, the mm -hmm. in the red red letters include up, include no sé cómo se dice include up. Where um I, I don't understand your question. Um si la las letras rojas eh, deberían incluir el app. That's es eso era lo que una de las cosas que quería que me identificaran, but thank oh, you very much. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's okay. That was in, in purpose uh there but you already checked it and you paid attention to that already and you already gave your classmates an idea regarding to that. But that's good. I mean, you identified that. So please, um, we're going to be working in groups. After we finish that activity, we'll come back and I will start asking you questions regarding to that. Let me just uh, move some people in here. And I will move you in here and I will move you in here. Okay, please go ahead, guys, enjoy your rooms and start working, please. Are you guys having any situation or any problem while connecting with your group?
exercise. You can scream the exercise, but I I, I already gave you a uh, permit or permission. I'm sorry for you to. Oh, okay, yeah. Thank you, teacher. Oh, Jenny, is she in here? I didn't see her today. Oh, yeah, she's in here. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I'm late, teacher, but thank you. I know. You. That, that's okay. At least you're here. So go ahead and start working, please. I already gave you permission, guys. If any one of you wants to okay. share screen, so you can go ahead and do that. I, 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 I just trying to share. Yeah, I already gave you permission. Okay, thank you, teacher. Um, we have to complete it because, for mm -hmm. example, grew up is a. Uh, I don't remember how the name of those verbs. For example, grew up, get Frisal up. verb. Uh, okay, hello, phrasal, phrasal verbs that teacher. are verbs that that. Uh, uh, for example, grew up is a phrasal verb. And yeah. I think that the sentence is incomplete because it needs its commas. Mm -hmm. And we have to add up it to the to mm -hmm. the non-defining relative class. And the answer for the second one is a non-defining relative class. We need to add the commas and we have to add up to the non-defining relative class. I don't know if I was clear. Ah, if por fin I was... puedo compartir la compañera. A mí no me deja compartir. Yeah, sorry, no. that, that was my bad. Yeah, I, oh, okay, I, okay. I didn't give you permission, but now I gave you permission. I'm sorry, that was my bad. Oh, okay, no problem. Okay, sorry, partner. Continue. I don't know if... Uh, if... I think because... In some case, we don't know in which part of the world is London. So, London. Not defining. Not defining. Not defining. Yes, it's not defining. Yeah, of course. We, 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 can, we can notice when we see the to come. Yes, it's true. Yes, I am. Which is the capital of England? Yeah. Sorry, teacher. England. Sorry, teacher. England. Yeah. Sorry, teacher, I have a question. Go ahead. Yeah, what's your question? So, uh, we need to include all the, the information. What do you mean? So, we need to uh, watch if the comma is necessary or not necessary. Oh, well, not really. No, what, not really. No, not really. What you have to do there is only identify or classify ah, okay. it, whether it is defining or non-defining. Okay. And for the defining ones, I need you to make a question to understand or to identify or, or like the little question that we had between parentheses, create that question just for you to like to help you just for me to identify if you are able to create a question to identify it uh when you don't have any help let's say okay okay thanks and uh, i can read this very well the the four sentences that's the dog. That's the dog that beat me. That. That's the dog that beat me. Como ese es el perro, beat me. Que me mordió. Que me mordió. Okay. 
is is um, is the similar case in the in the sentence number three. That that mm -hmm. is the dog. But in the in this case, we can use. Um, which we can use which or that which which for me well um um yes, no, number five no we find it yeah yeah we can we not can see the yeah, two comments. Yeah. Uh, can, can someone can someone read the complete sentence? Greg, whose job involves traveling a lot, has been in in nearly all the countries in the world. Okay, thank you. Now, if we take out whose job involves traveling a lot, the sentences lose the sense. Extra information. If you take out the... Cuyo trabajo implica viajar mucho. But mm -hmm. in the... Uh, the, the... No, no, define, sorry. Uh, I, what is hard for me is identify if it is defining or not defining, but I can identify very well where the non-relative clause is. And this part of the, in this part that we have to make sentences to identify them, I still don't understand it very well. For Be me is, for me is defining relative close uh, i understand that is the question is is, is who who the village no sé cómo se pronuncia la primera village. Village. village i'm sorry village for me is is which is, question is is who who But who is for person? But village is a thing. Yes, it is which? Which village? Which? Yes, which village? Which because which is the cell. Which village? What is the correct pronunciation? Which? Which? Yes, because if you say which village, you are saying something like La Villa del Deseo. I... <laughs> <laughs> no, o sea, yo le quería pronunciar el which que se usa como para decir cuál. Which. Which. Yes. Okay, which, the village. For me, is Which the village? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a defining relative clause. Then, and uh, all we have to do is add a color. Uh, For example, in the in the 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 last one, the office. I, uh, the office I have just about uh, I need the, the comma. Uh, before I, the office, comma, I have just rented, comma, is near my home. Please, can you repeat and then this exercise? The, in the last one, the office, comma, And in this case, I think the the second one is is uh, defining clause. 
So in this case, the question mm -hmm. can be which village? Mm. And Okay, uh, let me just do something in here regarding to some mispronunciations that I heard. Now, uh, well, I heard guys that we're having or some of you are having some mispronunciations. Uh, I also heard this one. <clears throat> and if I'm not mistaken, no, that's the only one. Okay. Now, uh, I heard that some of you were having some mispronunciations with this one. Let me listen to you, Debbie, with this one. The Okay, uh, say say that again, Devi. Village. Okay, Village. now Filomena, let's go with you. Village. Okay, now let's see Arturo. Village. Okay, uh, Jenny. Village. Ricardo. Village. Okay, Francisco Alberto. Village. Now, okay. Uh, we don't say neither village. What the right pronunciation is village, like age. Do you know how we say age? What's your age? So that's the same thing that we do village, village, village. Instead of saying age exactly like the way we say age, we just make it a little lower and we say village. Now, how do we make the difference in pronunciation between these three words? They are pretty similar. So let me listen to you, Jenny. Okay. Uh, wit, wish, wit. Okay, that was good. Iris, let me listen to you. Wit, wit, wit. Okay, Francisco Alberto. Uh, which, which, which. Okay, uh, Rosemary. Which, which, which. That was good. Arriving. Is he here or he's not here? Here, teacher. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Which, which, which. Okay. And last one, but not least one, Janira. Uh, wish, wish, which. Okay. Uh, what you did, Janira, you said wish, wish. You said the same thing. He said lo mismo, deseo. Okay. We say which. Which. Wish, like like the pollos I told you, and which, which, like we, we make a little T sound there. But uh, I know, guys, that it might be a little bit difficult for you sometimes when you're speaking a little bit fast or, or you know, when you're having a conversation with some of your classmates to pronounce them in the right way. Now, for tomorrow, guys, and this is an activity that we will have from now on. 
okay, from now on. I will send you a list of verbs and I will ask you for the uh, pronunciation in past and in past participle of five verbs every day, okay? That's what we're going to be doing. Before we start the class or at the end or the last 15 minutes of the class, I will be asking every one of you. Why are we doing that? Because we still have some mispronunciations on the past form of the verbs. Okay, from now on, every single day, we're going to be doing this activity. Okay, do we understand? I will send you yes, the list of the five yes, verbs for tomorrow after we finish the class. So it's already time, guys. Thank you very much for attending to the class today. Uh, I will send you the list of the verbs after we finish or we, um, you know, we end this meeting. And I will ask you the past, remember, past and past participle pronunciation either at the beginning of the class or in the last 15 minutes, okay? So that will be for everyone. So uh, I will give you a list of 10 or 15 verbs and you will decide which one you want to tell me. Only five, no more than that, only five. Past and past participle. That's what we're going to have from now on. So thank you very much once again for attending to the class. And I hope to see you all guys tomorrow. So I hope you have a good night. Good night. Good night, good night, good night, good night. 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 Good